And joining us now is David Stockman. He is a former budget director under President Ronald Reagan, now an advocate for fiscal responsibility, but not really an optimist on that level. David, thanks for joining us. You say a technical default is now a virtual certainty. What do you mean by that? I mean that between now and November 212, it's virtually certain they can't pass a large permanent increase in the debt ceiling. We'll have periodic short-term fixes, a month or two months or three months, and then they'll be back to squabbling in this enormous political battle we're having over the major components of the budget, revenues, Social Security, Medicare, and so forth. And then uh, we, it, it'll be back uh, to the same old gong show. So I don't have any hope that they're going to come to a substantive agreement on the big things that need to be done because both parties have ruled off the table the essential things that are necessary. We have to raise revenue. There's no doubt about that. We have to allow the Bush tax cuts to expire for everybody, not just the rich. We have to means test Social Security if we're going to make any headway in denning this massive six billion a day borrowing spree that we're on. Six and billion a day. Six billion a business day we're borrowing and neither party is facing up to the real truth or telling the public. David, let's talk specifics. That's kind of the thing I always want to get to. I mean, you were sure. on with Tom Keen recently and you talked about specifically broadening the tax base and you, you put out a, a bunch of, of things. I think you talked about a VAT, a value added right. tax. You talked about um, taxes for Wall Street. How likely is any of this going to be happening? How necessary is it that it needs to happen in order for us to fix this problem? Well, at the moment, it's very unlikely, but that's simply a measure of how unrealistic uh, the debate is down in Washington today. If they were realistic, they would be discussing what are the new revenue sources that we can possibly tap in order to fill this gigantic $1.5 trillion hole in the budget. What are the uh, pros? What are the cons? What are the trade-offs? You hear none of that discussion. So what gets They're us whistling to that point? past the grave. What? They should be talking about new sources of revenue and uh, possibly increasing some of the existing taxes so we have in place today. So what gets us to that point where they do have that real discussion? Uh, I think only when we get a major what I call thundering uh, conflagration in the bond market. Uh, basically for the last 10 years the Congress has been lulled to sleep by central banks that keep buying all the debt and therefore holding down the real cost of interest on the middle and long-term debt that we're issuing every day and frankly uh, bond fund managers who somehow think uh, that the tooth fairy is going to arrive and fix this problem when it's clear that that is not going to happen and that we have sovereign risk on the debt of the United States just as clearly as the world is now discovering their sovereign risk in the European debt issues and uh, uh, and so forth. You know, we're going to talk to Peter Tannis later. He, he's written a book, Debt Deficits and the, Devise of the Demise of the American Economy. He says it's going to take uh, a 9-11 style crisis before we can actually, Washington can actually move on this. I mean, do you, do you agree with that? And what kind of crisis are we looking at? Well, the kind of crisis would be a vicious sell-off in the global bond market. And that could come sooner than people think because the Fed is getting out of the market with QE2 ending. For the last six months, the Fed has bought nearly 100% of this $6 billion a day that's been issued. Once they're out of the market, where is the new bid? Where is the new demand going to come from? The Chinese are getting out of the market because finally they're having to deal with the rip-roaring inflation that they've had. And so the People's Printing Press of China won't be buying as much U.S. debt uh, because of its own internal problems. Now, when we get to real investors, what are some of the real investors saying today? PIMCO is short the bond. They're selling it. They're not buying it. So I think when we get into a two-way market, when real investors who can assess real risk begin to look at the gong show in Washington and the magnitude of the gap, 43 cents on the dollar that we're borrowing day in and day out, I think we're going to get a re-rating of sovereign risk. We're going to get a huge dislocation in the global bond market, and then maybe uh, the wake-up call will finally come. David, you do think the debt ceiling should be raised, right? And it continues. I think this will be the 11th or 12th time. The president in 2006 said that would show a failure of leadership. It's because of the government's rescal fiscal policies. It weakens us to add to our debt domestically and internationally. I mean, why? Is there any end to this 
increase in U.S. debt? No, there isn't, because it, the problem is not the debt ceiling. When push comes to shove at the 11th hour, they'll do it for a couple of weeks or months, and then we'll have a little more borrowing headroom, and we'll be right back to the same uh, impasse that we are now. The real problem is the de facto policy of both parties is default. When the Republicans say no tax increases, they're saying we want the United States government to default because there isn't enough political will in this country to solve the problem even halfway out of spending cuts. Maybe a default when the Democrats, will do that. Well, when the <laughs> Democrats say no, you can't touch Social Security. Right. When you have Obama uh, sponsoring a war budget for defense that's even bigger than Bush, then uh, I say the policy of the White House is default as well. And that's the question that really needs to be uh, understood better, I think, and appraised by the bond market. Both parties are advocating default, mm. even as they point the finger at each other. All right, David, thanks so much for joining us. David Stockman, uh, always a great interview. We hope you come back here.